Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. In today's episode of Garden Ramblings, we're going to tour the entire garden, pretty much all of it. November 6th or 7th, I'm not sure what day it is, but I've gotten a lot done. I've got garlic in, got to smooth that over a little bit. The beds outside the garden are doing pretty well. I'm planting plants the deer tend not to like. Also got some garlic in containers. I have garlic all over the place. Carrots look good. More garlic right in the middle. Different cool weather crops. Things are looking pretty good. I'm in the process of cutting back. You can see all of my herbs, lavender, getting them ready to just kind of go to sleep and, you know, do their thing until the spring comes along. Lots of jalapenos left. I've taken out my Facing Heaven peppers. I'm drying them. Going to be saving a lot of seeds and I'm just going to cut these open and save them. I'll probably be doing a video on it. Also planted a lot of potatoes somewhere maybe the end of July, beginning of August. They've all died back. I knew that they would. But if I reach into here, let's see how well it works. I have lots of little potatoes in there. Let's find some more. Kind of hard to find right now. Hold on. We'll go into the bigger garden too. I'll show you some of those. I'm going to have a lot of baby potatoes and that's exactly what I wanted to do. Planted probably three rounds of potatoes. Not probably, actually three rounds. Did one later just to see what, you know, would happen. And if your potatoes, red Pontiacs, um, Yukon Gold, they all mature in about 70 to 90 days. Let's see if there's anything in this one. You can reach in here and just lots of little potatoes, exactly what I wanted. In the main garden, I have a mix of potatoes in there. Well, not the main garden. Don't know why I said that. That's behind me. This is my no-dig garden. I've been actually taking potatoes out of here. And you can see there's one large one. I mean, plenty of potatoes. I let this ground go, too. Plenty of potatoes for a third round beginning of November. I mean, who couldn't use more potatoes at this time? They're going to stay in the ground for a good 30, 60 days because the temperatures are dropping. They're not going to sprout. And I'll just be harvesting them just like this. Got to clean out the garden here, weed it a little bit. This is again my no-dig area. So compost that will be finished up in the spring. Be putting down four inches across here, replanting. I may be turning this into a pumpkin patch, although I like the potatoes in here. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but I'm starting to think about the different things that I want to do for next spring. Turnips look good. Those are onions that are going to overwinter, hopefully come back nice and strong. This gate has been sticking. Hopefully come back nice and strong in the spring. Cleared out most of my beds, put them to sleep in the ways I've been showing you in videos. Grass, leaves, other soil. Red leaf cabbage starting to form. Don't know if it's going to make it or not, but I'll be enjoying the leaves. Peas are not going to make it. The frost comes, it damages the flowers and the pods, but I can eat the shoots. And you can see everything is just kind of being put to sleep. More garlic back in there, all different varieties. Going uh, all in with garlic this year. I want to see what I can grow. Towers look good. I've talked about these in other videos. This is that speckled romaine that just bolts really fast. Tons of strawberries. Maybe today's video should be called, you know, strawberry tour. I've been repopulating these with runners and different things. They look really good. I have more to get down here. They're going to go into different parts of the garden. I've been really using all of my strawberry plants to kind of fill out different space. When we get to the fruit room of my garden, I'll show you what I'm doing over there. Beets, parsnips, radish patch, been eating out of here. Things have just been cleaned up. I'm satisfied with where everything is. Gonna be saving all the tomatoes that are hanging on that dead plant right there. We're getting our regular frost now, so all the warm crops are gone. Had peppers in here, uh, cut back the horseradish a little bit. Got collards in there. I think some of them are actually cauliflower, but I forget. And like I have all these beautiful peas, but as soon as the frost comes, it damages them. So they can't, you, you can't really eat them. But you can pick the fresh sprouts, the younger sprouts, like right up here. You can put them into salads. 
just a quick look transitioning over nicely the corn I'm gonna leave up for some winter interest I think that'll look cool when the snow falls hopefully we will get some snow Swiss chard is great to grow really almost four seasons here in Maryland this is gonna come back with a vengeance that really really likes the cool weather turnips are doing well let me spin around so my shadows not in here been harvesting turnips out of here I mean then here's just a massive turnip it is not soft it's not pithy it's not tough and these have been growing since probably beginning of August they grow really really fast so that'll go into some sort of dish bunching onions look good they went in on September 20th more turnips spinach what's cool about this is I have spinach right here planted at the same time as the spinach that's under cover of the polycarbonate the ends are open on there so it's not staying any warmer technically but I think it does give it a little bit of frost protection at night it just keeps the heat in there but that spinach is doing really well carrots lettuce planted these in a little bit of a different way just to see how they grow for a future video I don't know if this was round two or three of different things but I'm gonna have plenty of cool weather crops and probably gonna be able to harvest these well into December because the temperatures here are just ridiculous like today is 75 right now and it's gonna be warm this week so we'll see what happens that is my cold frame that I built I have videos on that nothing is in there now we'll see what I do with that letting the beans dry prepping the beds another round of radishes some carrots are in there the bib lettuce I've been eating it you can see one of the heads missing more collars right in there just having a good time slowly you know working at my own pace getting things in shape I talk about this guy all the time that is one arugula plant not cared for not watered there's another one another one they grew afterwards but a single plant is producing all that sometimes I plant a bunch of seeds in a row they do okay I cut them when they're younger they're not as peppery they get a little bit spicy when they're that big but look at that plant seeded itself growing really well you know we're gonna leave that tomato beds are set up for next year got some kale in there I'll be removing that the rabbits I think I had a rabbit in here and it was chewing things down maybe it was something else could have been grasshoppers anyway been protected with the chicken wire I'll be removing that don't know if I'll be putting up the hoop tunnel or not the low tunnel we'll see I've got other projects I'm working on I'll show you that we'll go over to the greenhouse on the way out these peppers have to be cleared out freshen up that bed I'll be collecting all the seeds for the from the beans these are plants you'll probably see the video before you see this one um, strawberries so these were all runners that I bought late at a nursery it's Sun Nursery in case you know where that is if you're in Maryland and I just dropped the plants in and pressed in the runners that will totally populate these beds maybe I'll keep them here maybe I'll move them if I keep them here I'm gonna still grow cucumbers up but I'm gonna just you know blank the bottom with strawberry plants maybe just do some cucumbers on the side some beans over there but it was only like I think I bought nine plants for $27 and I was able to populate that still a little expensive but so much cheaper than buying a single plant and then having to fill the bed it would have cost me easily you know 80 bucks to do all that towers looking pretty good highly recommend the vertical towers if you're interested in them there are still some rusted garden red red towers available at Greenstalk Garden the link is in my video description been popping lettuce out of here and what I found is I grow way more lettuce than I need but I enjoy it I like how it looks it's just you know for your mental wellness mental health I like growing things enjoy eating too of course took this back this was all overrun with blackberry brambles just like the one back there so I dug them all out not sure what I'll be growing in there this year but I'll fix the soil up just a little bit I am putting anything I dig up into old containers I'll have a bunch of blackberries next year to grow put in my garden maybe sell 
a lot of what I'm doing now is prepping for my plant sale next year. So I'm making basically inventory. I think these are going to be turned into strawberry beds or some sort of fruit beds. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them. Another round of radishes in there. That's arugula planted much more closely together than that single plant. The taste is a little bit different. This is a tomato bed all set up resting. I may put some leaves on there. That's what I typically recommend just like the one over there. But I'm pretty happy with where I'm at with the garden. So let's go well, let's go into the fruit room. So you, and I kind of break my property up into outdoor rooms. So that is a plum tree, doing well. My blackberry brambles, blueberries looking good. Just populated these containers. These are 33 gallon containers. They have holes in the bottom with strawberry plants. Back there is a nectarine tree. These have to get cut back. They're supposed to be dwarf, but they're getting pretty big. This whole row, blueberries. I've scattered down some organic fertilizer down along the bases of all the fruit that you see here. Strawberry towers, strawberry towers. A lot of people don't know that strawberry plants really produce, you know, when it's 50 to 70 degrees. They keep going. So they can handle the frost, 32 degrees. They can handle 20 degree temperatures. Um, temperatures here get into the low 20s and the teens. There's some more strawberries for me because the weather has just been so nice. So I have a mix of June bearing and ever bearing in all the containers all over my property so that I continue to get fruit. With the way the weather has been, you can see the plants think, hey, you know, I'm going to keep producing fruit. So that's pretty cool. There's some flowers on my alpine strawberries. Love the strawberries. So I'm cutting back on things that I may not eat as much of. Strawberries I know I will enjoy. Transfer, tr I transition these over to strawberry plants. Three back there. Well, before I go over there, that's my ginger. As soon as the frost comes, I'm going to be harvesting all of that. Trick to ginger is to start it in your house. I have a lot of videos on that. Starting pieces, two inch pieces in a Ziploc bag. Let it root out for a good six to eight weeks. And then when you come outside, you get to jump on the season. Three more containers of strawberries. I've taken a lot of the strawberries from around my property and just filled these containers. Pepper beds all set up and ready to go. Move this container that was tucked away in the garden. You probably never saw it. It wasn't doing anything but growing weeds. So I brought it out here, filled it with strawberries. Cleaned up this container. This had all of my shishitos in there. Brought over another container filled with strawberries going to be winter sowing in my cold frame. I'm not going to use milk jugs this year, but I'll be putting containers out here of spinach and different cool crops for the spring. I'm just going to let them do their thing. In here, I am overwintering my super hots. They should do okay. They are much, they grow much more slowly than my regular peppers. So what I found was that I don't really need to overwinter because we have a long season here in Maryland. So any of my sweet peppers, semi-hot peppers, I just grow them as transplants, get them outside. They do their thing. They get plenty big enough. There's no point in overwintering them. But the super hots are really, really slow to establish. So what I hope is I keep the root system alive, of course, a little bit of the green growth above the soil. And then when I plant, it's got these massive root systems. They take off and then I'm going to just get bigger and stronger super hot pepper plants. This is my garden cleaned up. I'm satisfied with where everything is. You know, go at your own pace. The only person you should compare yourself to is yourself. Don't compare it to other gardens. I think it looks pretty good. Slow and steady builds the garden. There's only so much that we can do. We got to work. We got to raise kids, take care of family, deal with illnesses, all kinds of stuff. The muscadines are dying back. Well, let's go over. So like I said, I'm building a lot of inventory for my plant sale next year. So I'm taking divisions, not doing cuttings. In the spring, maybe I'll do some cuttings. Let me just show you what's over here. I even have some more beds that I just put up. These are cool weather crops in there too. Been cleaning up the mint. Got a bunch of chives, peppermint. That's mint, some perennial flowers. 
Russian sage in bigger containers, garlic chives, and I said Russian sage, that's wild sage, not Russian uh, sage. More peppermint over there. So believe it or not, this is, you know, well over a thousand dollars worth of plants if you're selling them at like three bucks a plant, four bucks a plant. I've also started a lot of the perennial herbs now in my greenhouse. And that's just to have more, you know. It's, you know, not a lot of work to really use your greenhouse. This is unheated, packed, <laughs> full of stuff. Now we'll get back to the greenhouse in a second. While I was walking over there, I thought, you know what, let me show you where I'm getting these strawberry plants from. So over here, lots of shade. The strawberry plants have been growing in this little, I talk about this little flower box all the time. Strawberries were put in there, I dropped it back there, forgot about it. They always produce. They put out runners. You can see how thick they are right under there. They were all pushed out over this way. And that's what I basically dug up um, because there's actually a tarp under here. The soil's only a couple of inches. I can just pull the strawberry plants out. The entire root system comes up. That's what populated all of those metal containers you saw. And then I've taken runners from the vertical towers and I'll show you those in a second when we go back to the greenhouse. This is a space that I've been digging up blackberries all in there. That's the apple tree that I got on sale. I got to get that in. Let's come over to here. This is the space. I have mixed fruit, perennial flowers in here. This was all overgrown, but you're, well, you can see the containers right along there potted up a lot of these, the goji berries, the black raspberries, red raspberries, uh, holly sea foam, a perennial flower. There's some goji berries in there. These are all going to easily sell for six or eight dollars. I might even just leave them there. No, I'll, I'll get them over to the greenhouse. But I cleaned out this whole section. There's still daisies and purple coneflower, all kinds of different things in here that I can use. And for those of you that haven't seen the other part of my garden. This is where I have lots of fruit in here, some fruit trees. This is all gonna get cleaned up. And I'm gonna ch change this over because I was growing peppers in here and some tomatoes. I just don't need that. So I'm gonna be thinking about what do I wanna grow in here? Oh, Here, here's a mistake. So I let these weeds grow and now they've formed seed heads and they're gonna be all over the place. So lesson learned, I should have cleaned this out a good month ago. Now I'm going to have to deal with all these seedlings that are going to be coming up next year. All right, let's go back to the greenhouse. You can see containers there, black raspberries. We'll go over to those on the left. I have really well over $4,000 worth of plants, including what's in here. Again, packed in here. Should have bought a bigger greenhouse, but it's a good start. Perennial herbs are in here. They're all being started in the small cells. They'll be divided up sage these are all coming up this is actually purple coneflower so these are all put in on october 19th i think today might be november 7th peppermint catnip thyme the chives are finally sprouting for those of you that had trouble sprouting chives for the last two years i think there were bad seeds going around i could not sprout them for my life now they're all popping up like crazy they're usually like the easiest thing to grow some more oregano up here and in here, you just have to make sure you keep everything watered. That's sage, because it can dry out really quickly, especially you think it's November. Then we got 80 degree days last week. We had frost, 70 degrees this week. Lemon balm, and they're all doing really well. And I'm just gonna grow those out here, unheated, maybe roll in a heater in January just to protect everything. But I know that these can take a frost I'm not too worried about them, but this is inventory for my plant sale. I don't really need these around my property. A little bit of a space, a little bit of work, got to keep an eye on them, but I'm going to be able to sell these and then I'll use that money to buy other things for my garden. This is where I'm going to, and I have to still get that second coat of paint on there. And you can see, you know, got to get around the frames of the windows and etc. Never got to the second coat. I'll probably do that either this week 
maybe maybe next week if the temperatures are staying in the 60s and 70s I might as well finish painting everything but if not I'll get to it in the spring it'll be nice and white here's my table more black raspberries goji berries the whole goal just to get them in get them watered let the roots set up and they're gonna be great you can see sort of the potting station we'll come back to these I just did a video on this blackberries all in there more perennial flowers you get the idea it's not a lot of space but you know I, kind of, I have it tucked away so my wife can't see it so I should be left alone these are all plants from runners that were in the vertical towers that just I didn't I didn't they weren't long enough to get to certain pockets and I already filled up a lot of the pockets with runners so I again just did a video on this but I just took them all cut them down press them into the soil there are 60 plants here at least three dollars a plant it's 180 dollars the inventory is building so I've made a couple of decisions one of them is next year I'm going to do a plant sale I also want to increase the strawberry plants that are in the garden let's walk back over there think about what I want to reduce and plant more of what I just enjoy what I want to eat this is where the hops grow that I mean that really wasn't a mistake it's really invasive so you always have to be pulling the hops back because it will spread everywhere it'll take over the whole space I may be digging some of that up but I don't know if I want to sell it or if I sell it I'm gonna have to let people know you got to really stay on top of it so it's cool to have the hops growing up the poles and I make hop water now um, it's just a refreshing drink you can just use the hops Gives it that you know bitter taste that you find in beer in you know plain water the garden looks pretty good I mean well let's keep going then this is really a full tour let's walk around over to what I have back here check out the compost piles and then we'll call it a tour here's an angle people don't see very often the muscadines will all get cut back there's a bunch of them still growing right there if the temperatures stay warm enough I don't know if you can see them but if the temperatures stay warm enough I'll get more muscadines so November 7th garden is still producing got my tumblers in there let's go through the muscadine tunnel see if I can break through this is where I can oh, look at these these are beautiful I didn't even know these were here so they are ready when they're that soft and falling off they're ready to go we don't get those ambulance alarms too often or fire trucks I hope my neighbors are okay coming through here a little bit of a mess but more garlic planted in here not going to repeat and grow eggplant peppers tomatoes cucumbers in here because I'm just not using them they'll be in the main garden maybe I'll be growing some pumpkins in here I'm still figuring out where I want to put in the pumpkins the fruit the cantaloupe but definitely gonna do a garlic bed here I like it growing it I like eating it I like giving it away so why not and then finally which I always encourage people to do if you haven't done it is start a compost pen you can see right in there I've got some asparagus growing you could even dig that up you never know what's gonna grow in your your compost I get all kinds of stuff been digging around pulling out um, beef compost out of here and you know the tomatoes are dead more tomatoes that'll be harvesting all those seeds they grew on my compost but compost is golden and you can see you know when you walk or when I do a tour of my property I need a lot of compost especially for the no dig garden this is all going to be ready next year I'm just leaving the tarp off now let the rain get to it slowly putting in leaves and just repopulating everything I understand you know we all don't have the space for compost but if you do I now recommend that before people plant a garden dig a garden do anything to a garden is set up a basic pen just something like this and get your compost started because everybody's gonna need it and makes a huge difference thanks so much for watching when it comes to your garden try not to get yourself overwhelmed take time to really recognize the things that you're accomplished you've accomplished 
don't keep looking at your to-do list you know slow and steady my garden it's been kind of a mess for six seven weeks finally got it to where I want it to be I'll be cleaning it up slowly more and more over the next couple of weeks but you know do what you can thanks so much for watching please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and please subscribe I'll be showing you how I basically plant this entire property starting in the spring of 2024 thanks for watching